Thanks for coming. Hi, thank you for having me. It's exciting. Um, so my question for today actually didn't, it feels like it wasn't really my question, it just came through me. Uh -huh. And it is, um, what would you do for service if you were not singing? Oh boy, me, I don't know. You know, I always wanted to be involved with music. Music was really important for me. But the seva part of it, or the service part of it, mm -hmm. is, um, that's a whole big thing, you know, that's a big concept. In India, there's, they talk about service. So mm -hmm. one can do service for people, for one's guru, for different communities, for humanity, you know, mm -hmm. one can do all those kinds of service. But, but if one wants, uh, to use service as a, as a spiritual practice, mm. or to, so to speak. So Krishna talks in the Gita, nishkam karma, which is desireless action. Mm -hmm. And he's very big on saying things like, do what you do, but the fruits of your action, or the results of your actions, are not up to you. You know, you, you, you give it your 100%, whatever it is you're doing. But whether it works out the way you want it to or not, or whether, this is, this is, this is not up to us. All we can do is live in the moment fully and do our best, whatever we're trying to do. But however it works out is uh, not really up to us. You can offer food to somebody and maybe they don't take it. Maybe they throw it away. Maybe they say, oh, thanks a lot, and then they turn around and throw it away. You can't force someone to eat, you know, right, necessarily. You can't force the world to always respond the way we want it to respond. So to use action or service as a, pot, a path to freeing ourselves from our fanatical obsession with, who, with me, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, then it's a question of letting go of the fruits of our actions and leaving it to the universe. So I started chanting, you know, to save myself because I had to. I mean, I was going under. Mm -hmm. I wasn't making it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have much idea of doing it as service for anyone other than trying to help myself not be depressed all the time and try to find a way to get through the day without being uh, covered by the clouds of so much negativity and unhappiness. However, as time went on, you know, and, and once again, the epiphany that I had was that I had to sing with people for it to work for me. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was also difficult to, you know, kind of get started with. So, uh, but it became apparent to me that when I sang with people, it was more powerful for me too. Mm -hmm. So I can, so it's, it's helpful for me and it's part of my practice to have people with me chanting. Mm -hmm. And uh, for better or worse, that's the deal, I don't know. But once again, the idea of, uh, of desireless action, you know, when I first started singing with people, I was really a hungry guy for a lot of things, fame, all kinds of money, and all kinds of stuff, popularity, you know. And so I recognized that after a few months of st st singing with people and that, that I was going to use this practice to feed myself. And I, and I just couldn't do it. it was, I was horrified because that's not why I was doing it. I needed to connect again with Maharaji. I needed to deepen my connection with that, you know? And so if I was gonna be concerned with attracting things to myself and grabbing them and using them for my own benefit, the, how is that gonna help me? You know, now is it gonna help me? Was it gonna help anybody else? It was gonna be hurtful to other people. So, you know, I quit and I went to India and gradually, after a period of time in India, things changed for me, to put a very long story in a very short sentence. And then I was able to really come back and really sing. 
So I don't know what I would have done. I don't think I, there's anything else I could have done as, as a service for people or to, even to myself, except this. This is probably the only, this is, this is the thing I have to do. You know, I always joke it would be, I'm either, I'd either be doing this or pumping gas, you know? So, uh, I'm just not, you know, that's, that's the deal. And, uh, so the idea of doing seva or service for people always includes oneself, you know, because if we're, giving so much of ourselves away and not feeding ourselves and we're not going to last very long. You see a lot of people who are trying to help the world, but they're angry inside. So what can come from anger? Now, maybe their motivation isn't fully anger, but there's anger underneath. Even if it's righteous anger against hypocrisy or righteous anger against the evils, quote unquote, in the world, you know, that anger can only create more anger. So if we don't clean our own hearts, it's really very difficult to, to be there for anybody else. So, it's lucky I found chanting. <laughs> Maybe I could have been a, a television reviewer or something. Well, I was thinking of when you drove the school bus, actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. I used to do that, too. It's more difficult nowadays to drive the school bus. Is it really? I had a great time. I was upstate. It was upstate New York. So mm -hmm. We used to have long drives through the country with a bus full of crazy kids. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, I did the same in Manhattan and Staten Island. Oh my, in the yeah. city. I could never drive a school bus in the city. 40 years ago, nuts. though. Yeah. So well, things were a little more same. There were, there were two-way streets in those days, weren't mm -hmm. there? I remember that. And I met you at Garrison. Uh-huh. In the chanting. Recently? This no, you were, you were a guest, surprise guest speaker when Sharon was there with the guys from Baltimore. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And that's, I didn't know you. I uh -huh. didn't know um, what chanting really was. I know the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was so powerful and in a way changed everything. Mm -hmm. um, I went immediately back to my room because I felt like I needed to go up to the stage to like sit at your feet. That's mm -hmm. just kind of what I had, to, I had to do this. <laughs> and then when I went back to the room, I went on iTunes and downloaded you and just went like this for the oh, rest wow. of the 12 hours. And then when I went to, I have a spiritual teacher and I explained this, I said, don't you think I was supposed to go up there? Mm -hmm. It was just how it felt like I should have done, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of well behaved nowadays. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so he, he said, I think you need to um, wear grounding stones. He said, you mm -hmm. need to ground yourself because he said, you are so attracted to the light and mm -hmm. you are light. And um, so I wear grounding stones now, uh -huh. but it has changed me and taught me some patience and mm -hmm. discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. But um, all, it's all, all of this grounding or ungrounding, or in mm -hmm. the, it's all about us becoming a good human being. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and going through our day creating as little suffering for ourselves and others. Yeah. All these practices, and this is how we get the strength to be that way, mm -hmm. to do that, to overcome our own, you know, issues little mm -hmm. by little and become more open and more kind and more caring. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just put a grounding stone on, on the computer when you listen, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, I listen and I read and I've learned a lot. And good, very good. Yeah, it's all good. And I put it into my work, which is service. With, into your? Into my work, my job. Uh-huh, oh, very good. Yeah. All right, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. This is for you. Oh, is this a grounding stone? I don't know. If no, it's actually it. meditation <laughs> stone, but someone said that we could do a picture. Uh, yeah, sure. Somehow. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. You. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. All right.